Hi, it's me, Exy. This is Exy's Book Nook, and welcome to an early 2023 book haul. I have 36 books to talk about, and all of these have been hauled since Christmas 2022 till now, which is the 10th of March as of recording this. And yeah, that's a lot of books to talk about, so I'm just going to go right into it, because I don't want to make this too long, but it's already going to be very long. I'm going to be splitting these up into genres. I'm going to start with a thriller, mystery, and horror section, followed by a more general fiction section, and followed by a fantasy and sci-fi section. The fantasy sci-fi one is by far the largest, because I bought a lot of those, so I'm going to keep those for the end, but there will be timestamps in the description below and on the bar where you can just skip to the part you want to see, so let's get right into it. Now, because this is a haul that spans the last two and a half months, I have actually already read some of these books, and the first one being Sundial by Katrina Ward is one of the books that I've already read. Sundial by Katrina Ward is the second Katrina Ward book that I've picked up, the first one being The Last House on Needless Street, and this is about Rob and her daughter Kelly, and their relationship isn't really what it should be between a mother and daughter, uh, Kelly is kind of creepy and her mother doesn't really like her she's kind of creeped out by her but she also recognizes those patterns of behavior from her childhood so instead she decides I'm gonna take my daughter and I'm gonna see if I can fix her by taking her to my childhood home where there are secrets buried deeply buried. I picked this up because I very much liked The Lost House on Needless Street by Katrina Ward and I wanted to read more of her works and this was a newest release so I bought it when it came out. Next up we have The Chestnut Man by Søren Spystrup. This was a random pickup in my local bookstore. When I saw the cover it seemed intriguing and then I decided to read the synopsis and I was like yeah what well, you know what this sounds good enough I want to try this out. It's a very simple premise. A year ago a girl was kidnapped and murdered but the body was never found although the perpetrator was arrested and now one year later a woman is found brutally murdered in her house with a little chestnut man above her body and on that chestnut man is a fingerprint of the girl that went missing a year ago but it is a very fresh fingerprint so it cannot have been from that girl or can it but then it follows this killer as he keeps killing more and more women and leaving these little chestnut men on the bodies and it becomes a police investigation to try and find the killer and track him down and it was very interesting because this is almost 500 pages long and i was very worried that it was going to be too drawn out or too long and not interesting but no the action starts on page one and it doesn't end until like page 460 it was such a wild ride it was amazing i do want to warn you though that it is very very gruesome so it is definitely worth a read but the author does not hold back on depictions of gore and of the murders. There's no fate to black when a murder happens. Next up we have Little Sister by Gita Lodge, another random pickup at my bookstore. This is about two sisters who both disappear and a few days later one of the sisters comes back completely covered in blood, but it's not her blood, it's the blood of her sister. So when the detectives start questioning her about what happened, they like fully believe that she must know, she says, I will tell you the story, but only the full story. And it basically turns into this almost game like is she telling the truth or is she trying to play games with them and try to like spin the story to paint her narrative so i'm very interested like the tagline said is she the victim or is she the killer i kind of like those kind of stories especially because this is after the fact it takes place in a police interrogation i don't know if it's structured that way but i tend to really like books like that Next up we have Five Survived by Holly Jackson. This is the author of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, so when I saw that she was coming out with a new release I had to read it. This is about six friends who go on a road trip when all of a sudden their trailer breaks down and they are being targeted by a sniper because one of them inside the RV has a secret that the sniper wants and he tells them, you know who you are, come outside, we will kill you and we will let the others go. So they have to decide what the fuck are we gonna do because they're stuck, it is the middle of the night, they have no cell service, they can't get to anyone they're there on her own so six enter five survive and that sounded fantastic i'm not usually the biggest fan of ya mysteries but sometimes i tend to pick one up especially if it's either like karen mcmanus or holly jackson because they've both shown me that they can absolutely write good compelling mysteries that don't really hold back too much which is an issue that i have with a lot of other ya mysteries and thrillers Next up we have House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. This is about a girl who basically lives in the slums and then there's a very rich neighborhood to the north and she decides to go there and apply to become a blood maid, which is... I don't know what a blood maid entails, but it makes me think there's some vampire culty stuff going on there and it seems that there really is. But then the other blood maids that are working at the same house, the House of Hunger, go missing one by one and Marion, the main character, is drawn into this conspiracy, she's drawn into the mystery. This uh, is a horror book by Alexis Henderson. Now I have read The Year of the Witching by this author and I didn't really like it but I'm absolutely willing to give her another try because I've heard really really good things about House of Hunger once again so we'll see how it is. Next up we have a really tiny book which is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Now I've talked about this a few times. T. Kingfisher is an author I really want to try out. I have another book that's going to be in this hole later on by T. Kingfisher which I have already read. This one I haven't. She writes these books 
books that are a blend of like fantasy and horror, which is something I really enjoy, like blends with horror, sci-fi horror, fantasy horror. This is a retelling of Edgar Allan Poe's The The Fall of the House of Usher, which I've never read, I'll be honest. But, you know, I know that this author can write. I know that she writes the type of books that interest me. So I think this could be an amazing match, which is why I keep picking up more and more T. T Kingfisher in the hopes that I find one that I really love. So I don't really know much going into this story besides that it's like a haunted house kind of story. And lost in the thriller mystery or horror section, we have If This Book Exists, You're in the Wrong Universe by Jason Fargin, Fargin, whatever. This is a sci-fi horror about like eldritch beings that pull you into different universes and are trying to mess with your mind. And I also realized that apparently this is the fourth book in a series. And I have not read book one, two, or three because my books already didn't have them. So I just randomly bought this because the title absolutely intrigued me. And I'm not going to really even look at the synopsis now because, as I said, there's three other books, which I may eventually read. We'll see. But for now, this is kind of like a dead book. And I thought about returning it, but I was too late already. So you know what? It's fine. Next up, we have the general slash literary fiction slash classic section of this haul. So let's talk about those. We have To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara. And I am intimidated. I am scared. I... I'm very hesitant to read this. I have not yet read A Little Life and part of me is tempted to read it but part of me also doesn't want to be traumatized because most of the time I'm either too depressed and I don't want to read super depressing books because it's going to make me feel worse or I am happy and I don't want to ruin my happiness and my good moments by reading super depressing books. I don't know if there's ever going to be a moment anytime soon where I feel like diving into a 700 something page trauma dump basically because I know that's what A Little Life has been described as and this one as well so yeah. I know this focuses on multiple characters throughout different time periods and their lives and you know probably gonna get a lot of trauma and emotional shit going on um, and then there is this like interweaving story between them like featuring notes and additions that tie these stories together so I am curious like I've heard good things about both of their books besides that they're very fucking traumatic to read. I keep saying that. I'm just, I'm scared, okay? I'm scared. Next up we have Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Durr, Dower, Durr, whatever his name is. This also, just like To Paradise, uh, focuses on a story that is set in multiple time periods following different characters in said time periods and all five of them are connected through this ancient text that tells of the end of the world, basically. And that's honestly all I know about it. There's only a two-sentence synopsis and that's all it says. Um, but I remember that this book was in the general fiction um, Goodreads Choice Awards like two years ago and it looked very interesting then but I've never gotten around to reading it so when I saw it in my local bookstore I was like you know what I heard good things about that it sounded intriguing I'm just gonna pick it up. Next up we have Mad Honey by Jodie Picoult and Jennifer Finney Boylan. Um, I have never read any Jodie Picoult but this was on the general fiction Goodreads Choice Awards and it sounded intriguing once again so I picked it up. Uh, it's about this woman who like a dark secret is revealed about her husband, she divorces him, she moves away with her son and starts a new life by basically taking over her father's beekeeping business and then we also follow a another mother and daughter duo who are also starting a new life in this town. The kids end up falling for each other, end up connecting and because of that the mothers connect as well but then one day um, Asher's mom gets a call. Lily, the other kid, is found murdered and Asher is the only suspect and is basically abused her life once again and it sounded intriguing enough um, there's another Jodie Picoult on the, in the top 10 that I also want to read but I didn't get yet. So when I saw this in my bookstore I was like, you know what, I pick it up. I have like three categories in my bookstore. Either they're books I hadn't heard about but sound intriguing in the moment, they're books that are on the Goodreads Choice Award list and I want to read them, or there are books that I'm like specifically targeting because I've heard about them. And this was on the Goodreads Choice Award list, so I saw it, I buy it. And next up we have Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is a classic. I wanted to read like five to six classics this year and we are currently in March and I haven't read a single one. And one of the things I struggle with with classics is that they tend to be very long. So if I'm not into it, I feel like I have to push through and that just doesn't work for me. So I'm looking into starting some shorter classics and Treasure Island is one of those. I love these uh, editions, like almost all the classics I have are either in this or the actual like letter bound editions from Penguin Classics. And you know, Treasure Island, I don't even really know what it's about. I think it's a kind of a fantastical story of adventurers finding treasure on an island. Sure. So that is that section done. It's a lot smaller, as I said. But next up, we're going to go into the fantasy and sci-fi section, which is where the vast majority of books will be. Because I said I was talking about 36 books, and I've only talked about 11 so far. So the next 25 are fantasy and sci-fi. Let's get right into it, shall we? First of all, we have the Children of Time trilogy by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Children of Time, Children of Ruin, and Children of Memory. And I have these gorgeous special editions. I mean, look at these. I've actually already read these. 
So I'll give you a little synopsis for the first book. This is set in a future where humanity has advanced to the point where we can fly out to the stars and we are living on different planets, but we're also at the point where we can start terraforming different planets to our own satisfaction, to our own needs. And that is what this follows, a group of terraformers under the lead of Dr. Evrana Kern, who want to terraform one of these planets and turn it into a new Earth-like place, basically. But not for humanity to live. Instead, they want to release apes upon this planet and introduce a heavily curated virus that is going to basically recreate human evolution, but uh, at a significantly accelerated pace. So they want to see, like, what happens if... They want to see if they can recreate humanity, and Dr. Evrana Kern wants to be god over them. Like, she wants to be there. She wants them to look at her as god, as their creator. She has a, a few delusions of grandeur, I can say, and... But everything goes wrong, because there are terrorists on Earth, there are groups that do not agree with this scientific advancement, and they decide to blow up the station. But at the same time, back on Earth, that war is also happening, and a lot of nukes are fired off. So all of a sudden, these apes and the very few people stranded upon this faraway planet are the last survivors of Earth, because like an EMP is sent out and all electronics are destroyed. So what turns into... So what turned into, like, a creation of new humanity is now all of a sudden the last survivors of humanity. Well, except for the few people who were able to survive on Earth, slowly build back the amount of technology that they had, and able to travel the stars again, because Earth is still a wasteland, basically. And they end up flying out into the stars, like, tens of thousands of years later, and come across this planet that was terraformed. And that is the synopsis I can give you, but overall, this series is absolutely fantastic. I loved it. I absolutely love this series. It is so good. And I can say there are multiple more Adrian Tchaikovsky books in this haul alone, just because I love this series so much and I want to read more by him. Next up we have Cytone by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the Skyward series by him. This is a YA sci-fi series about this girl named Spencer who wants to be a pilot, um, but she's not allowed to because her father is seen as a traitor. He was also a pilot on this planet. Um, but she is finally allowed to train. She's finally allowed to become a pilot by going through a lot of hoopals, and people are not going, going easy on her. But they're basically on this planet that is surrounded by aliens who are slowly trying to break through to them and invade them, but the pilots are basically the last line of defense. And that is what the whole story is about. This is the third book in the series. There is a novella collection that's in between and after this, like partially before, partially after, partially in between, that I technically still have to read, but I've picked this up read the first two books in the series, and they're pretty decent. They're not, like, amazing, but they were fun enough that I wanted to read the third one. Next up, we have A Clockwork River by J.S. Emery. The clockwork part of it is immediately just, like, intrigued me because I love that kind of setting. Like, clockwork, steampunk, that kind of stuff is really cool. This is about a city which is almost entirely run by this river that runs through this series of clockwork inventions, basically, that powers everything. And there's pipes that lead the city, there are sluices, there are dams. The entire city is dependent on this. But this city has lost its glory. It's been a thousand years, a lot of the mechanics, a lot of the clockwork is actually starting to fail. And with that, the family, the descendants of this engineer who created everything, is also starting to fail almost, like they're losing their money, they're losing their influence. So these two brothers set out to try and figure out like, hey, can we fix what our ancestor created? Can we try to get the city running again? And they're drawn into this web of secrets, of like old buried family secrets. And it sounds like a fantasy mystery kind of, but it just, it looked so intriguing. I really like the cover. I just, I love the idea of clockwork, of, of steampunk, as I said, so I definitely want to read this. Next up, we have Legends and Nothing by Travis Baldry, and this is a very straightforward story. It is about Viv. She's been an adventurer, a mercenary, basically, but she is done with that life. She wants to settle down, hang up her sword forever, and open a coffee shop. However, nobody really knows what coffee is, and she has no business experience whatsoever. So how is she gonna manage? And that's the entirety of this book. This is a cozy fantasy, but there really isn't any action, there really isn't anything like that. It's just a contemporary story set within a fantasy world. It is super wholesome, it is amazing. This is just, like, really fun. I do hate the cover though, like, the US cover is so much better, but this is the only one my books were had. Next up we have another random bookstore purchase, which is Do You Dream of Terra 2 by Temi O. Basically, this is about scientists who have discovered a planet that's Earth-like and a group of 20 people is being sent there to see if they can live there, see if they can make something about this. And it's like four of these people are space-age are space age veterans and then six are teenagers who have been trained for this their entire life. But they are going to be locked in a spaceship for 23 years. 
and there's no possibility of help or something goes wrong and something always goes wrong. This just sounded pretty intriguing. I like stories that are kind of set in space, but then on a spaceship and an enclosed environment. Um, the idea of training your whole life to go on a 23 year old journey with no hope of help. Sounds pretty cool. Next up we have The Book of Sand by Mo Hader. This is another random book purchase, apparently writing as Theo Claire, and I hate this fucking sticker because it's a completely different color. And this is set on a world that is basically an entire desert planet, kind of reminds me of Dune, of Arrakis. Um, but there's a family walking on this earth and they have to find an object that's located somewhere near water, but a bunch of families have been sent out and only one can get it and get the shelter they need. So it's going to be a story of a bunch of families trying to go for one single item and they will be ready to fight for that because it is their survival. Which had a pretty fun, it's fairly long, but it sounded good, so I bought it. That's really the reason. It's like I see a book, I go into my bookstore with a certain budget and I'm like, okay, sure, I'll get it. Next up we have Neil Stevenson's Seven Eves, Seven Eves, I don't know, it's seven both ways basically. Um, and this is also a post-apocalyptic story, uh, something drastic happens, Earth becomes a ticking time bomb, and people are sent out in space to basically try to survive and to ensure humanity's survival. And then 5,000 years in the future, the people who have managed to survive and their descendants return to an utterly transformed and cataclysmic planet named Earth. I'm still fairly new to the sci-fi genre and I want to read more and these are the types of stories that intrigue me, like what are people doing to ensure humanity's survival? Although I am often of the opinion that humanity's survival should in fact not continue and we should not go out there and conquer other planets in the name of humanity because we are a fucking scourge, but that's my own opinion. I do like these kind of stories. Next up we have The Circle by Dave Eggers. This is about The Circle, which is a company that runs all of your internet activity, basically your entire online life. They seem to know everything about you and because of that they've become the most large, they've become the largest and most influential company in the world basically. And we follow a woman who starts to work at this company but she starts discovering that not everything seems what it is. Something seems to be wrong and there seems to be a dark secret at the core of this company. Um, it's compared to A Brave New World, which is like the type of book that I like. This is kind of like, what if corporate control got out of hand? Because we are starting to get to a point where corporations start controlling most of our lives. I mean, just look, at, I can be talking to my phone right now about a certain book and I'm certain ads are going to pop up for that specific book or specific thing very soon because we're all being listened to and spied to. What if a company just came out and started running everything that way? So a lot of the sci-fi that I read tends to like, you know, I mean, almost every book is political, a lot of fantasy is political as well, but I just like taking a look at like, what would our future be? The kind of dystopians that could actually happen. Um, they're just very intriguing. Next up, we have another T. Kingfisher, like I talked about earlier, Nettle and Bone. This is a fairy tale story by T. Kingfisher about the third princess in the household. Her oldest sister had married a prince. She died under mysterious circumstances. Then the second oldest married the same prince and she's in a very abusive relationship. This prince is a piece of shit. And the third daughter, the main character, decides, I'm gonna rescue my sister, I'm gonna fucking murder him. So she goes to a grave witch who has a chicken possessed by a demon and a reluctant fairy godmother and they basically set out on a quest to collect items that will allow them to kill the prince, basically. And that is his story. It's a very popular fairy tale kind of story, even though I'm not the biggest fan of fairy tales. As I said, I want to read more T. Kingfisher, I want to try out her books, so I bought this when I saw it at my local bookstore. Next up we have When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. This is a story of women basically being fed up with the patriarchy, fed up with their existence, and they turn into literal dragons. Some of them devouring the men in their lives on their way out, some of them wreaking havoc, and now you follow this girl uh, whose aunt ended up dragoning in the mass dragoning event of 1955, or where hundreds of thousands of women spontaneously dragoned, all on the same day at the same time basically, and it left the world in a bit of disarray, but nobody's allowed to talk about it because it's a very taboo subject. It's never in the news. Nobody's allowed to discuss it or investigate it, report on it. Everything is suppressed. So she now lives a life with her new sister, who's actually her niece, and she's trying to get through life while also trying to understand why did some women dragon and some did not. And next up we have The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. I had heard so many good things about this from a friend of mine over on Twitter, and she absolutely loves this book. So I decided to pick it up when I saw it in my local bookstore once again. I know this is a story about a woman who is a thief, the Stardust Thief, and she has this gin bodyguard. Uh, and one day she saves the prince's life, but then is blackmailed into 
going on an adventure, going on a quest to recover an item for the Sultan, and that's the story basically. They have to survive ghoul attacks, they have to survive a perilous journey, and I think there's some romance in here, so this sounds pretty good. I've heard amazing things about it. We have a few more books to go, starting with the Lycanius or Lysanius trilogy by James Islington. It's behind me here, I have special editions. I'll grab one of them. Here we have the first book, The Shadow of What Was Lost. It just has block sprayed edges, but I do like the under the cover, um, like hardback a lot, especially the spine. It looks really cool. So I may actually display these at some point without the dust jackets on, but I have all three of these. I have no idea what they're about, so let me read the synopsis actually. So apparently there were these like godlike beings called augurs, and they have been overthrown 20 years ago, so now people who have the same kind of magic as them are heavily oppressed because of their association with them. And they have agreed to these four tenets, basically heavily weakening their power and what they are able to do. But then the main character in this book discovers that he has significantly more power than he originally thought, that he's a lot stronger, and an ancient enemy awakens. And it's just your epic fantasy story, typical epic fantasy story, I would say. But it sounds pretty good, and I got these special editions uh, from the Broken Binding subscription. Wasn't going to cancel my subscription for this series because I'd heard good things about it, so I do want to read this quite soon. Continuing on the trend of Broken Binding subscription books, we have Best Served Cold by Joe Abercrombie. And if you know me, you know that Joe Abercrombie is my favorite author. You know that The First Law World is my favorite series ever. And this is a standalone book in The First Law World, but they are often also... But often the three standalones that all follow each other are um, combined in the Great Leveler trilogy or collection. Um, and the Great Leveler being death or a metaphor for death because death levels us all and everyone is equal in death. And um, this is the first one of those three. So The Broken Binding has done the original First Law trilogy, which I have over here, and now they are doing the standalones special editions. And like, it looks gorgeous. Look at these sprayed edges. And then the under, and then under the dust jacket looks really cool as well. And this cover is the exact same as the paperback that I have, but this cover is never obtainable in hardback actually so it, it's really hard to just find these books in hardback in general because they're quite old now they're only being printed in paperbacks so the fact that i now have a hardback of one of my favorite books in my favorite series is amazing i know that the next two months are the second and third standalones and then they do plan in the future to do the age of madness trilogy and i will have special editions of nine out of the ten books of my favorite series which is just fantastic and next up we have another Broken Binding book. This is The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. I hadn't really heard about this book ever, but The Broken Binding was including it, and this time it's a standalone while they normally do like trilogies or series. Um, so this was a one-time book, and it looks really pretty. And this is about a half-goblin boy who has basically moved away from the Empire, from his father's court, who's the Goblin Emperor, and he's just living his own life. He doesn't want to be there. But when his father and his three older siblings are all murdered, he has to go back and assume the title of the Goblin Emperor amidst a lot of political intrigue, people wanting him dead, people wanting him to succeed. Um, it sounds like a very heavy political intrigue novel, and the character is half-goblin. I mean, this is gonna be goblins. Goblins are cool. And once again, gorgeous special edition, gorgeous sprayed edges. The Broken Binding does really well with their uh, special books, and this is the Naked Heart... And here is the Naked Heartback. I mean, they look really cool, and I definitely... I'm glad that I made it onto the subscription. All of these are signed by the author and numbered. I am number 985 out of 1500, so every single one of my Broken Binding special editions has that number, and it's just cool having one of 1500 limited editions. Next up we have Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. This is the second book in the Alex Stern series. I don't know if it's a duology or a trilogy, I'm not entirely sure, but this came out a few months ago and I finally got around to buying it and I want to read it. Ninth House is the first book in the series and it is one of the only books by Lee Bardugo that I actually enjoyed, although my opinion has kind of changed over the years since I read it, because it's been like almost three years, and they've soured a little bit, but I did still want to give it a try. I had a lot of thoughts about the first book. It is basically set at Yale, where these secret societies or, uh, operate. They do blood rituals, human sacrifices, a lot of occultish rituals, and a lot of the most powerful and influential people from around the world are there. And then Alex Stern, the main character, is basically hired as a paranormal investigator for these organizations because she can see and interact with ghosts. And that is the whole story. It's a dark academia story, which I'm not usually the biggest fan of, but I like the writing. There were a few choices to make where I was like, eh, 
There were a few very questionable scenes in there, but I do want to give the second book a try. Next up we have A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. Now this came out like a week ago, maybe a little bit longer. Um, this is the... well, it's not a sequel, it's a prequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree, which was a standalone fantasy. This takes place a whole bunch of time earlier. Um, do I even really know what it's about? No. Is there a synopsis in here? No, there's actually not. Do I dislike the fact that I have this edition now and not the matching one? Yeah, because this one is significantly smaller, but this was the only one they had. So I will read it. It's a very big chunk. I very much enjoyed The Priory of the Orange Tree, or at least I enjoyed the characters, I enjoyed the world building. I just found the plot to be very anticlimactic and I found the pacing to be a little bit off. So I hope she has improved on that with this book and I hope the pacing is better. Next up we have The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is a book about the Night Circus, a circus that randomly appears, it's never announced where it's going to appear, what is going to happen. One day nothing is there and the next day there's a full-on circus there and that's all I know and there's no more synopsis for this. I just, I've heard a lot of good things about this. I mean this book is over 10 years old, it has been on booktube for so long, everyone talks about it, but I've never read it. So when I saw it in my local bookstore, as usual, I picked it up. Next up we have Kaikei by Vajnavi Patel. This was a book that did the rounds on booktube like a year ago but I never got around to reading it. And what I know about this is that it is based on an Indian epic and basically a reimagining of that, so a reimagining of an Indian myth. And I don't really know anything about Indian myth whatsoever. I've never really read about it. I know a few of the gods and maybe a bare, like a bare, bare, bare minimum, but the epic that this is about, I don't know anything about. I've never actually read it. So I'm very curious. I've heard really good things about this. I've heard the writing is really good. And while I have a multiplication set that I'm not the biggest fan of these, of, the, of this hype and trend of myth retellings, I am mainly not... that is mainly targeted towards the amount of Greek retellings we're getting, because I feel like that the amount of Greek retellings are incredibly oversaturated at this moment. I feel like authors are copying each other left and right, and it just doesn't feel original anymore, it doesn't feel fun to read anymore. But I do enjoy when it's aimed at different mythologies, like you have The Witch's Heart, which was a Norse myth retelling about Anger Boda and Loki, and this is about an Indian myth. Um, so I do enjoy that, mainly because I don't know much a lot about it, the stories aren't so commonly known, um, and it's just a lot less common to find a book like this, to find a retelling that isn't Greek, and that isn't overdone, or a story that has been, like, that has inspired a bunch of other stories that is just so commonly known. So this one I'm actually really excited about. And then I said it earlier, but I have a few Adrian Tchaikovsky books. We have Shards of Earth and Eyes of the Void. These are book one and two in a new series by him. And I've actually forgotten the name of the series. I genuinely don't really remember. I do know that the third book is coming out in like May, I believe early May, so in a month and a half. So maybe I can read both of these before that and then immediately read the third one. But basically I saw that they had two of his books there and I just really wanted to read more sci-fi by him because I loved the Children of Time series so much. So in this world, about 80 years ago, an alien entity known as the Architect came to Earth and murdered a whole bunch of people, almost everyone, only a very few um, managed to escape. So people like Idris, the main character, had their mind shaped by humanity to basically become their weapon, to become a weapon to defend Earth. But then the Architect just suddenly vanished and weapons like Idris were forgotten. But Idris is fine with that because they would rather just sit in a little ship be by themselves and not be bothered by anything. But that is until Idris makes a big discovery. And that sounds really interesting. I mean, like, I know Adrian Tchaikovsky has really good ideas. His writing is really solid. I just enjoy it. So that's why I picked up both book one and two at the same time. And then we have come to the very, very last book of this haul, which is another Adrian Tchaikovsky, this time The City of Lost Chances, which is his latest release and is an epic fantasy instead of a sci-fi. This is about a city that is under the rule of, what are they called, the Palestine. Um, they're ruling the factories, they're ruling the people, they're oppressing them, and people can't really get away. And if you live in a place like that for long enough, it's gonna spark revolution. People are gonna wanna rise up. But a lot of this spark seems to come from the Anchor Wood, a dark forest grove with a portal to a thousand worse worlds and cities inside of it. And at the end it says, Ilmar, City of Long Shadows, City of Bad Decisions, and City of Lost Chances. It just sounds really cool. I know it's a new series by him and basically the same reason. I've read four of his books, I've loved the three of them, and the other one was pretty good, so I just want to read more. And that brings us to the end of this haul. 36 books hauled in the past two and a half months. A lot of reading for me. I'm actually really excited about so many of these and I can't wait to get into them and maybe I will have videos about them on my channel. 
probably a TBR and a wrap-up, but maybe some dedicated reviews as well. Anyway, what are some books you hauled in the past few months? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!